morning, everyone. So we've got Irina Grechitina, is that right? Grechitina. It's complex, I know. I, I practiced this, I forgot it. Um, she actually works for Sputniks and uh, is going to tell us all kinds of stuff about dealing with logs and things better. I understand she's really into quality and hates kludges. That's why we took a while before we started. So thanks, Irina. Please go yeah. for it. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining me on this talk and thanks for your patience. Uh, so the topic uh, that uh, I want to cover today is uh, Sentry. Uh, Sentry is a real-time open source error tracking uh, tool for web application and uh, services. And uh, they have uh, the following motto. Uh, software errors are inevitable, chaos is not. And I think that it is a very cool illustration of uh, what uh, Sentry purpose is. So Sentry gives you a confidence that your web application uh, runs uh, at the moment, it works uh, the way that you want it to, and uh, it happens at all times. And if uh, something goes wrong, Sentry will tell you precisely what is it, what is wrong. And I know that uh, it sounds like a silver bullet, uh, but in some cases Sentry really is. And I hope that uh, in the end of uh, this talk uh, you will agree with this bold statement. Uh, but before I dig into details, uh, I want to ask you several questions. So the first thing, uh, uh, please raise hands uh, who knows something about Sentry, so even heard about it. Okay, so it's less than the half and less than the third, okay. And uh, those who raise their hands, so uh, do you know that uh, you can use it for free? And who knows, please raise the hand. Less, less, and uh, do you know that you can self-host it on your own servers? Oh God, only three of you, four, five, okay. Uh, and uh, who use it? Okay, so less than uh, the number of people who know about it, okay. So uh, this is exactly the reason why I want to talk about uh, Sentry, uh, because uh, uh, Three of uh, the previous uh, companies where I work uh, have no real-time monitoring and uh, the only way to check uh, what's going on with your application and if it works correctly was to check logs. And uh, in all three places uh, I've uh, suggested to introduce Sentry and uh, to use it instead of these log checks and there was uh, all the same uh, conversation. Uh, so I've told about uh, Sentry and uh, told that uh, this is uh, error monitoring and uh, the response was always why, uh, what for, we have uh, logs. And uh, don't get me wrong, uh, this approach works, but I uh, have to say that looking through hundreds, thousands of uh, log lines uh, and using grab and tail, it's uh, far from efficient. And uh, I will try to show you that Sentry is uh, better than logs uh, because of its convenience. And I will describe different situations when, sen uh, when logs won't help you and uh, while Sentry will. And uh, now let's go to, so I will switch between uh, presentation and uh, my project and uh, Sentry. And uh, so uh, I will try to make, oh, one moment, to make it bigger. And I hope it's seen now. And uh, I need a developer tool. So uh, very simple application. Uh, I uh, use Flask, UBSGI and SQLite and uh, it consists of one page and we have here one uh, input to set user ID, one input to set some uh, value to add it to our SQLite database. Uh, this button sends a post request uh, to add this value to database. Then here we have uh, two dummy buttons that do nothing uh, except writing some stuff to our console. We will use it further to show off Sentry and also we have this button that sends a GET request to get uh, the sum of all values uh, specified for this uh, user ID. 
And uh, in backend, uh, everything is uh, very simple too. I hope. Can you see it? Is it okay? Um, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so as you can see, there is only uh, uh, two endpoints. Honestly, free, but uh, these do nothing, and we'll we will uh, check it uh, further. And uh, currently, so we have two endpoints. So the post uh, to add values and uh, get to get some. So nothing. Uh, complex. Everything is very easy. And uh, now let's add uh, some values to this guy with u first user ID. Let's look to the network. One moment. And uh, so several requests and uh, let's check uh, the terminal so we can see that requests are sent and let's check that everything is okay in our database so we can see that we have these values and they are integers and everything is uh, okay and now let's get uh, the sum of this uh, value so 110 and we will get this internal server error uh, let's check logs and uh, what we have here, we have uh, some type error exception and unsupported uh, operand type for plus. And in general, you may think that uh, this error is obvious. But uh, however, uh, this traceback uh, doesn't provide the information of what's going on in uh, the application at the moment when this exception occurs. And the only additional information that, can you, ex that you can extract is uh, uh, the location, only the file, and that's all. And let's compare it with uh, the Sentry report. Uh, so I have uh, this Sentry. It is self-hosted, uh, so it's located on my own laptop in uh, Docker. We'll talk about later. And uh, let's uh, update it. So I understand it's not very obvious, but here we have the main page with uh, the timeline. So it's uh, the event feed with all exceptions that ever occur in our application that connected to this project. And here we have this last uh, exception that occurred. And uh, here we have some information, so exception type, uh, location, so nothing new at the moment, uh, then uh, message. Also, we have information when uh, was uh, the last uh, occurrence of this exception, and uh, it's too big now, <laughs> and if I resize it, oh no. So in general, with the previous resolution, it shows all also uh, the occurrence of the first exception, and it was six days ago, or something like that. I think it's uh, because uh, the resolution too big. And also we have uh, the uh, uh, final number of uh, these exceptions that occurs in this uh, project uh, from its beginning. And also, again, with the bigger resolution, we have uh, a nice graph that shows you the frequency of this exception. So you can see and and uh, look at this and see that, for example, at 9 o'clock you have the burst of these exceptions for some reason and you can start to investigate. And now let's go inside and uh, here in the head we have the same information and uh, then, oh, here it is, uh, the uh, graph. Oh no, not sorry, not very convenient with such resolution and, uh, oh god, it's, oh, here. Uh, some information about me as a user, so which uh, browser I use, which Python I use, which operation system. Also, we have this important stuff, uh, so we can know uh, which request was broken, which endpoint was called uh, when this exception occurs. And uh, then uh, we have this traceback, uh, like in our log report, uh, but here uh, it is the place where cool stuff uh, starts because we can expand uh, this each line and uh, look through the local variables associated with uh, this uh, stack frame. And we can see here that uh, we have these variable values uh, that we try to sum. And we can see that inside we have not the list of integers as I expected, but we have uh, the list of list of integers. And obviously we cannot sum such stuff. And here is the example that uh, we can, uh, so we find ver the reason of uh, the exception without even reproducing it. So we can just go to Sentry and uh, look at it and go and fix. Uh, and 
when I was in Nubia, I was horrified with exceptions, and I have uh, so real problems with reading it, understanding it, and fixing it, and it takes lots of time uh, to do something with them. And uh, let's take this and as an example and pretend uh, what I would do uh, in this situation without Sentry. So first of all, I will look through database and I will see that everything is okay, I have integers. Then maybe I will Google message uh, from exception and find out that SQLite could provide um, uh, not that data format uh, that I've expected and I need to reproduce this error and I will add print and try, uh, try to launch this um, application locally but if, what if I have no opportunity to start it locally I need some test machine to deploy my code with print and what if uh, the error is more complex not like this obvious man, one and what if and it is uh, the main thing what if the exception involves user input so if, of course if you sometimes you can extract uh, information from query stream from access log you can see it there as a part of the URL but for example your endpoint could use uh, JSON para uh, so parameters from JSON and uh, they are gone forever you cannot see them in access logs and you have no idea what what was that why <laughs> why it was broken uh, so uh, this is uh, the place where Sentry could uh, help you. Uh, so you, the only thing you need is uh, to extract uh, this outside data to variable, so like this uh, values. Uh, so here we just extracted it to the separate line, and you will see this in your Sentry report. So yes, bad news for one line function lovers. You need to uh, extract all uh, the data that you're interested in to separate variables, but in the end you will see it here. And um, so now we know what's going on and we can uh, fix it. So I have uh, already a snippet here, so just let me uncomment it. Uh, nothing complex again, so just add uh, this line. And uh, let me, yeah, one moment, it's reboot. And uh, now let's uh, make it, yeah, so we have this number, everything works now. And now let's uh, change uh, the user uh, and uh, insert something. And uh, again, it works. Everything is OK. And now let's uh, again get the value. And again, we have internal error. What now? Uh, let's check. And we have again this uh, type exception, this type error with slightly different message. But uh, this time it's absolutely obvious. So we will have uh, some strings in our output from SQLite and everything is clear. So let's just check the second user. And yes, we have this seven here. And uh, so everything is obvious. And why do I bother you with this uh, problem? So there are two important things. Uh, so the first, let's look at the SQLite schema. And we will see this. The table vals should contain column value with integer type. And here you just, hey, hey, SQLite, what, what is it? You have this uh, schema. Why you're allowed to provide uh, strings uh, as a value to your integer column? And uh, I didn't know it. So I think you cannot know it uh, before you encountered with this exception. So we just, uh, you know or not, uh, you encountered or not. And uh, the, se uh, the second thing uh, is uh, about users. So uh, users always uh, find a way to break your service. And they are always be that guy, uh, that user that uh, provide a string to a quantity input in your cart. Uh, but this exact example is uh, easily covered by developers uh, so during development uh, on front end, but uh, uh, the idea is that we shouldn't underestimate uh, users' fantasy and uh, which uh, input they could provide. And I uh, uh, separated these two cases, these two users, uh, intentionally, uh, so to illustrate uh, the idea that all users have different behavior and all of them could provide different uh, inputs and uh, they could use your service in different time of day and with different frequency. Some of them could be careful and read tips and others will write down just the first thing they have in mind. And uh, 
in the end, uh, you could have a very rare bug uh, on your service, but it could be important. So it's connected with the cart, for example, and you won't have uh, real money. You lose real money because uh, some user won't buy your goods. And uh, uh, so in the end, even these rare mm, errors, r rare bugs uh, will uh, be important. Uh, but in case, uh, so because of its rareness, uh, I think uh, it could be a big chance that it will be lost in logs. And here we come to our presentation again. And one moment. Uh, uh, so here we come to the logs disadvantages. Why are they have problems? So the first thing, uh, you have can have several machines uh, where your service is deployed. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, no aggregation tool for logs, it really could be a problem. So on my previous job, I have 70 servers and without aggregation tool. And even if you have only five servers, uh, so tell me, will you check each one on a regular basis? So I can tell for myself, no. It's uh, So you, you come to server, check that everything is OK, maybe check another one, it's OK too, and just leave. And uh, the error, as I said, could uh, appear on one machine only once in 10 minutes, and you will just uh, lose it. And the second disadvantage of logs is their noisiness because you always have uh, expected errors. So, for example, network hiccups or uh, inaccessibility of uh, third side service. And you cannot turn off uh, this uh, uh, stuff because it is your eyes. So, if you have no trustworthy monitoring, uh, it is uh, the stuff uh, that help you to make a decision. Is your service is alive or clogged. Uh, so you need these expected errors. And uh, in the end, this is the reasons why people don't like to look through logs uh, for a long time. And uh, uh, this is the reason why rare mistakes are lost. And here I have one small tip on this. Uh, so the problem that uh, uh, not everything settles in the logs, I've covered it already, that, for example, we have no JSON da data in logs. Uh, and uh, you just don't know what input the user provide. And uh, what help us? Sentry. Uh, let's go to... Oh god, sorry. One moment. Uh, let's go to Sentry again, to its main page. So to this timeline. And maybe you've already uh, understood this. Um, similar exceptions are stacked to groups. So here we can see that type error uh, with this uh, message occurs 46 times and uh, your expected errors that you have in your application will be stacked too and they won't uh, make a noise in this timeline. And so they will be uh, stacked and uh, that's all. And in case if you have, I don't know, 50 expected errors and they covered the whole timeline, you can just mark them as uh, ignored uh, like this. So just use this button and uh, in this case you will have all this exception in logs in case you need them. So to grab, to make some statistics. and uh, But Sentry won't have this noise here. And also you... Uh, so Sentry will notify you about new events and uh, I want to emphasize it about new events. So I mean if you have already this group of events, the occurrence of the new member of this group won't trigger an email. And uh, so here is the important slide. Uh, one moment that uh, Sentry won't bombard you with notifications. So it will send email only in case when uh, this exception was, uh, so the, it was the first time occurrence of these exceptions. And uh, the second uh, thing uh, you could, uh, when you fix the issue, you could mark it as a resolve in timeline and it will disappear from there too. But if it occurs again, Sentry will send you a mail with a uh, mark that it is a regression. So you won't uh, lose it. And uh, also you can uh, adjust uh, the, int uh, the time interval during which uh, errors will be aggregated, so notifications will be aggregated, and you will get uh, the whole bunch of these uh, notifications once in 10 minutes, in 30, an hour, like you, uh, the, the way you like. And uh, also you can adjust 
rate limits. Uh, so just decrease, if you have lots and lots and lots of uh, events, you can uh, just make this rate limit. Yes, you will lose some uh, stuff, but uh, your sentry and your service won't be clogged. And uh, also for very fast notificating, you can integrate uh, Sentry with your favorite uh, team messenger, for example, Slack, uh, connected to a channel, and uh, this notification will be immediate, and also the whole team will see them. Uh, so very convenient. And uh, what's next? This is uh, so it is very easy to make to get yet another dagged logs instance uh, in face of Sentry uh, if you don't pay attention to it. So first of all, of course, fix from time to time even uh, non-critical exceptions. But we know that uh, it's live and uh, there could be, for example, deadlines and you won't bother, bother about some parse exception that occurs once in two hours when you have, for example, registration issues. And uh, for these cases, uh, there is a sane way uh, to prevent uh, bug symmetry. So you just need to set out a resolve for all the issues in a week after their occurrence. And uh, so, for example, uh, you have a deadline and you have no time for sentry and uh, some errors uh, were there and not critical and uh, they will be out resolved in a week and you will get again this notification. So you won't forget about them. Uh, the same with vacation. For example, you were out for two weeks so week and you came and you don't want to look for it, maybe some of these errors are not relevant already and they will be out resolved and then you get uh, these email notifications. Uh, so in the end, uh, it's not the end of my presentation, so it's just the end of uh, one part. So Sentry allows uh, to be notified about errors instantly, as uh, soon as they occur. Then you don't need to crawl through the logs with Telegrap. You sa have the, all these uh, uh, convenient reports. Also, you don't need to search for uh, necessary logs on different servers and thinking where this exception was. And you won't miss an important new error or regression. So you adjust notification and uh, everything is very neat. And uh, now I hope that uh, Sentra looks interesting for you. And uh, I will share some general information about it, about deployment and some other stuff. So <laughs> the most important part, Sentry could be used for free. So uh, to be specific, there, there are three ways uh, to use uh, Sentry. So first of all, you can buy subscription and use Sentry Cloud. Second, you can use Sentry Cloud uh, for free with one user and uh, the number of events in less than 10,000 in a month. And uh, the third, you can just self-deploy it and I for free. I prefer the last variant, Sentry, sorry, uh, because uh, Sentry Cloud has an issue, it has issues. And uh, the problem is that you have uh, this significant delay between the moment when uh, the error occurs and the moment when you get notified about it. And from my own experience, the de this delay could be around two or six minutes. And uh, when I started to prepare this talk, I uh, uh, started with uh, Central Cloud and uh, in the end it uh, was just waiting game uh, until uh, the event uh, will hit Sentry. So for six minutes you can sit and uh, wait. And uh, for production is uh, the same thing. So if you deploy your service with some critical issue and uh, your service uh, being uh, torn with a hundred of exceptions, you will have these six minutes until you know about uh, this. And in some cases, if the issue is uh, small and simple, you can do, you can fix and redeploy your uh, service during these six minutes. And in uh, case of say, using Sentry Cloud, you will have you just notified at this moment. So I prefer self-hosting, and uh, very uh, there is nothing. Uh, complex in this. So first of all, you just need to find uh, Sentry on Git on Docker Hub. Download this official uh, image. Here they have uh, a small uh, and uh, clear instruction how to use it, how to uh, launch it. But if you won't make it 
more easier, uh, so easier, uh, you can use uh, this Docker Compose uh, that I have in my uh, repository. I will share the link in the end. Uh, where all these uh, instructions are put in one Docker Compose file. So here is uh, some instruction too, but it connected with uh, secret key generation, uh, super user, and all that stuff. And in the end, uh, you really just need to uh, launch two commands, and that's all. So there is uh, no excuses not to use Sentry. It's free, and it is very easy to deploy. And... Uh, uh, what what else? Oh, sorry. Uh, one moment. I need this. Uh, so the next uh, thing I want to share that uh, the next step to create a project is uh, very easy too. Uh, so uh, we have this button, add new project, and uh, we will uh, go here. Let me make it a little smaller. So you can see that there are lots of uh, languages uh, that uh, Sentry supports, and even not languages, but uh, separate technologies. So for example, we have Django and Flask here, and uh, use uh, Sentry for both of these frameworks. And uh, you can, we can just use Flask and uh, uh, make a name and uh, create a project, and uh, it will be created. And here, uh, immediately you have the instruction how to use Sentry, how to integrate it in your project. So you need to install some Sentry SDK and then you have this part. So five lines of code is needed to, uh, are needed to integrate Sentry and that's all. So let's look at he at my settings, so here I have so input center is the car, center in it. I specified my DSN for my project that could be found in settings of uh, the project that you created, and that's all. So after this, center will handle all unhandled exceptions that you have uh, in uh, your project. And also, and I think it's a killer feature of uh, Sentry, I love this th feature very much. So you could uh, send uh, some events, messages to Sentry uh, the same way as errors, but by yourself using built-in logging of uh, Python. And here we have this endpoint, so log, and uh, just some uh, uh, string and also we add here some local variable that was generated here so it's just uh, the example to show you that you can provide uh, some stuff to your error and uh, let's go and uh, use this endpoint uh, so it's uh, empty result and uh, I need to switch to my project one oh god where is it one moment uh, here we can see this. Someone used a log with this uh, local variable. So the same had uh, the same uh, information about me. So the only thing you know, you have no stack trace here. So to have stack trace, you need to use logger exception. In this case, it uh, will be provided, but uh, for just uh, messages, use error and war warning. And uh, I th uh, so I've said that it's a killer feature in my opinion. And uh, uh, I want to share some examples when it could be very useful. Uh, so, uh, first thing, uh, so in general, there are lo much more cases where you can use it. It's just uh, that uh, I want to share right now. So, first of all, uh, the first example connected with a situation when you're requesting third party uh, services. So, for example, you, ha you want to uh, show the fo uh, the weather forecast in the corner of your main page, and you will uh, request this data from the third party service. And you uh, just uh, cover this block with try accept and uh, lock to Sentry in case of exception. What we, uh, this stuff uh, uh, gives you? Uh, so first of all, uh, you will be sure if there are any internal servers error and which of them. And uh, you can uh, judge, uh, do you need this, serv uh, this service? Is it uh, stable enough for you? Or maybe you need to find an alternative. Then if it's your own service, you can find bugs there, bugs there and also find bugs in the integration maybe. Then uh, you can uh, 
is the process uh, of investigating why the service uh, returns you invalid response. So, for example, again with uh, the weather forecast, if you get uh, empty result, uh, you can using Sentry you can easily realize that uh, you provided incorrect uh, coordinates uh, for your place where you want uh, weather, and. Uh, uh, so don't use hours finding out what uh, parameters were sent there. The second example, you can monitor known errors. So for example, you have uh, a partner who uh, provides uh, some products, some uh, information about products every night, and you need to download pictures and uh, set them to your uh, server. And you, uh, s some of these pictures are not available, links are broken, and you want uh, to know the number of these uh, link broken links. So you just, uh, again, use logger, and uh, in the end you will know how, how many. Less than 10%, uh, nothing to care. Uh, more than 50%, it's uh, uh, maybe you need to cont contact your partner, and maybe this is the even don't know about this issue. And uh, also you can use it during refactoring. So for example, you refactor some part of uh, your code and want to remove obsolete uh, uh, method. And, uh, but you are afraid because it could be used somewhere dynamically and you are not sure. So just put there a logger warning and uh, you will see these events in Sentry. And you just need to clear this part in code. And if you have no notifications in a month, so you can easily remove this uh, part. Uh, without nervous, uh, without being nervous, and uh, the same thing with obsolete clients. Uh, so uh, you deprecated products or API. The same thing. Uh, use logger, and uh, you will see if there are any clients that use your obsolete stuff. So ask them to remove it, and everything is okay. Um, here we are at PyCon, uh, but I thought uh, that uh, it's important to mention uh, uh, JavaScript and uh, frontend uh, because I don't know. Mm, okay, f I know few, dev very few developers who uh, had ever touched, uh, had never ever touched uh, frontend or wasn't forced to do it, uh, and uh, at least. Uh, we need to understand and uh, be aware if uh, front-end uses our back-end features correctly. And also you can share this knowledge with your front-end colleagues and tell them that they can use Sentry. So um, Sentry could be used uh, in JavaScript and uh, it is uh, the same easy way. So you need this uh, Sentry in it here. Uh, the same uh, DSN, and uh, if um, it's not so neat like in backend because you need it uh, need to configure so to enrich the context by yourself. So for example, here I added ID by myself, uh, and there are other options uh, in the documentation that can be used to enrich the context, uh, and. Uh, so in the end, you get all the same information uh, in Sentry. So let's. Uh, quickly do something. One moment, we'll clean everything. And uh, let's uh, use uh, some uh, non-existent user ID, so for example 55. Uh, push these two buttons uh, that provide uh, here some text and uh, use show user account. And we have this uh, undefined uh, uh, type error exception. And we can see that here we have uh, uh, request sent to Sentry, and let's look at it. Um, here it is. Uh, all the same stuff, uh, so uh, uh, frequency, then uh, information about me, and uh, here the stack trace with the exact line there where the exception occurs. Unfortunately, you cannot uh, do the same stuff like in uh, Python and cannot see variables, but you have these bad crumbs. And look, we have the user action history. So we can see that uh, he, uh, so me, clicked uh, uh, some uh, buttons and uh, used some input. And uh, here it is the uh, 
state of console, so it contains a full string and also I clicked uh, button woo here and then button count and we can see that right before uh, this type error a uh, user used this request sum and uh, so uh, you can uh, investigate this problem immediately and uh, I think that this stuff so uh, uh, the opportunity to have exceptions uh, from uh, front-end is uh, a treasure itself because uh, when you have uh, this uh, wave of exceptions in your century you can uh, start to investigate and uh, you can do it before users or managers feedback and uh, when they come to you and say hey hey I have uh, some uh, letter from user you can say I already fixed it and we are deploying at the moment I know everything uh, so I think that uh, this front-end uh, sentry could be useful for back-end developers too because uh, so this is the problem on back-end we uh, uh, could return something better or it can be uh, solved on front end so uh, as a back end developer you can uh, find a usage of this too and uh, i think that's all let me yeah uh the last the last slide uh so uh when you use sentry you can uh, know what's going on with your project uh, so you can be sure that it works and when you get some notifications you can uh, precisely know what's going on and why the problem was or at least uh, your fate will be ease. Uh, there could be uh, complex uh, errors and you need to reproduce them uh, but uh, Sentry will help you and uh, this process won't be so terrible. And uh, in the end you are not afraid to make changes. You deploy easily because you know that you will be notified and uh, so Sentry uh, will stay strong and notify you about regression, about new errors and uh, integrate Satri in, in the development phase because it can ease your connection, communication with uh, QA uh, because you can use it uh, on test stage and you don't need to ask each other what parameters you used, uh, what was here, where headers and so on uh, because again you have the Sentry report and uh, your communication with QA will be much easier. So I think that Sentry is an awesome tool and I think that now you're on my side and uh, the number of uh, people who use Sentry uh, after this uh, talk will rise. That's all. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, thanks, Irina, for squashing your talk into the provided time. I think you did a very good job with that. We won't have time for questions, though, unfortunately. But, but you can just ca catch me if you have, and uh, I will uh, glad to answer all your questions. Great. Thanks.